Through its 12 generations, the El Dorado often epitomized Cadillac's idea of personal luxury. Welcome back to All Cars, y'all. I am John, and this is a far too brief history of the Cadillac El Dorado. In 1953, GM introduced a series of top-of-the-line, very limited production convertibles to show off its design leadership. The Olds 98 Fiesta, the Buick Roadmaster Skylark, and the Cadillac Series 62 El Dorado. Drawing inspiration from the 1952 El Dorado concept car and the Dagmar bumpers from the LeSabre show car, it introduced several design touches such as the sheet metal dip at the side windows and the wraparound windshield. Only available in four colors, with two colors available for the top, it had unique bodywork but shared engines with the Series 62, and at $7,750 was nearly twice as expensive as the all-new Packard Caribbean convertible. Over 220 inches long, 80 inches wide, it was well equipped for its time with windshield washers, signal-seeking radio, power windows, and a heater. For its one year of sales, it sold 532 units. For 1954, the El Dorado began using the bodies from standard Cadillacs in an effort to lower its price and increase sales, which it did. The price dropped to $5,700 and sales jumped to over $2,100. In 1955, the rear of the car was redesigned with more distinct tail fins to distinguish it from the rest of the lineup and other touches. Sales nearly doubled again to just under 4,000. In 1956, the two-door hardtop was introduced called the El Dorado Seville. Cosmetically retouched again, sales increased to just over 6,000. For 1957, the car was restyled and re-engineered, but still based on the Series 62 C-body and keeping two headlights and a high level of standard equipment. Also introduced was a Series 70-based El Dorado Brome hardtop that was hand-built and derived from the Park Avenue and Orleans show cars of 53 and 54, with quad headlights and rear suicide doors. An astonishingly well-equipped car with features such as the first memory power seats, electric antenna, Automatic release parking brake, cigarette and tissue dispensers, perfume, atomizer, air conditioning, self-leveling air suspension, and notably, a magnetized glove box with drink tumblers, and much more. It had 44 combinations of full leather interior and trim options and included options such as sheepskin or lambskin carpeting and an all-transistor signal-seeking radio using 13 transistors. It only sold 400 versions with its eye-watering price of $13,000, making it twice the Eldorado and more than a Rolls-Royce. It only lasted two years in domestic production, with minor trim changes in 58 and only 300 sold in that year. For 58, the Series 62 Eldorados got the quad headlights and various trim and body changes. For 59, GM had originally proposed styling that was bulky and then abandoned it in response to Virgil Exner's successful redesign of the 57 Chryslers. Now longer, lower, wider, the 59 was based on the now-named 6200, although the two-door Eldorados were on the 6400 series and the Eldorado Brome was now on the 6900 series. All shared the same 130-inch wheelbase, and along with other styling and engineering changes included a rear grille that mimicked the front grille. The engine was a 6.4-liter overhead valve V8 making 345 horsepower, and the car was very well equipped. The Brome added AC, auto headlight dimmer, and cruise control. For 1960, the tail fins were more subdued, but with other trim changes elsewhere in the car. The Brome itself also became lower, longer, wider, with subdued tail fins and more angular roof lines. The body was now produced by Pininfarina, where the chassis was sent to Italy, assembled with the body, and shipped back to Detroit. It now cost over $13,000, or $1 more than the previous generation, but it did not sell well. The fifth generation launched in 1961 with a major restyle and re-engineering of the sea body. The Seville and the Brome were gone, and that, along with the styling changes, led to a drop in sales to just 1450 
1962, the car was facelifted with a more upright grille and other cosmetic changes, and the ride was refined for quietness. Essentially the same car, the sixth generation in 1963, was heavily revised stylistically with lower fins, a more rectangular grille, and an overall more angular look. The engine was entirely changed, but ended up with the same 6.4 liter displacement and 325 horsepower, and the car offered a total of 143 options, an all-time record. For 1964, the car received a facelift with a new grille and revised tail fins. A new 7 liter V8 was offered with 340 horsepower and the new turbo hydromatic transmission, as well as the first completely automatic HVAC system. For the 7th generation in 1965, styling was once again revised. The headlamps were vertical, allowing for a wider grille. The same 7.0-liter V8 continued, but the frame was revised, allowing the engine to be positioned further forward. For 1966, there were more trim and styling changes, but also variable ratio power steering and options for the front seats with heating pads built in. 1967, the 8th generation was a radical repositioning of the Eldorado, moving from the C body to the front wheel drive E body shared with the Riviera and the Toronado, it was promoted as a personal Cadillac. The rear was inspired by the GMX Stiletto concept and the front featured the only production Cadillac with concealed headlights behind vacuum operated doors. Initially with a 7 liter V8, then a 7.7 and an 8.2 added, all using the 3-speed hydromatic transmission. Very well received, it sold nearly 18,000 its first year, nearly three times the previous Eldorado's highest. For 1968, the 7.7 liter was added and disc brakes became standard with minor modifications primarily to meet new federal standards. Sales increased further to over 24,000. In 1969, the hidden headlamps were eliminated, and in 1970, the new 8.2 liter engine was added with 400 horsepower and remained an Eldorado exclusive until 1975. A power sunroof was added as an option, as well as a longer hood and revised grille. For 1971, the car was substantially redesigned, becoming the ninth generation. Still on the E-body platform, it got fender skirts which made it look heavier than the previous generation, but for the first time since 1966, a convertible was available. A relatively long-lived generation, it lasted till 1978 with several major refreshes, and in its first year sold over 27,000 units, setting a new record. Of interest is a primitive fiber optic lamp monitor that was installed which displayed whether headlamps, turn signals, and others were operational. By 1973, the car received a facelift with a new massive grille, bumpers, tail lamps, and more. The 74 was again refreshed with an updated grille, rear end primarily to meet the new 5 mile an hour bumpers, and inside a two-tier space age dash. By 1976, it was the last year of the convertible and heavily advertised by GM as, quote, the last American convertible, and about 14,000 were sold based on this, many by people looking at them as investments. The final 200 were bicentennial editions for America's 200th birthday and were all identical with commemorative plaques on the dashes. In 1977, the Eldorado got a new grille, new tail lamps, and the 8.2 liter engine was replaced with a smaller 7 liter V8 with 180 horsepower. In 1978, the grille was revised as they prepared for the new model. In 1979, Eldorado, now in its 10th generation, continued to share the E-body platform with the Riviera and the Toronado. Wheelbase was shortened from 126 to 114 inches and overall length from 224 down to about 204 inches. The car received independent rear suspension to help keep the rear seat and trunk space in spite of the reduction in length. By 81, there was an option for full digital instrumentation. During its run, it offered multiple engines, from a 6-liter V8 down to its first V6, a 4.1-liter from Buick in 81 and 82. Initial transmissions were 3-speed and then a 4-speed in 1984. Notably, it had the 864 variable displacement engine. In 82, they began offering the Eldorado Touring Coupe with heavier duty suspension, larger tire, and trim options as a driver's car. This ETC designation would reappear later. In 1984, after eight years, the convertible returned. More about that at the end. 
A successful redesign, by 84 they sold over 77,000 units and were about 26% of all Cadillac sales. The 11th generation in 1986 was a dramatic misstep for General Motors. Drastically downsized in anticipation of high gas prices that never happened, but with a higher base price than the previous generation, the new Eldorado failed to capture traditional Cadillac buyers or luxury import buyers from BMW or Mercedes. Sales fell by 72%. Still on an e-body platform shared with that Riviera and the Tornado, the interior volume remained comparable to the previous generation, while wheelbase shrunk to 108 inches and overall length to about 191 inches. That 4.1 liter V8 remained standard, as were four-wheel disc brakes and electric leveling, with full digital dash display. The convertible was again dropped, but this time to leave the convertible offering to the Elante. Of note, this was the first Eldorado with fully framed door glass. For 1987, Cadillac increased the warranty to 5 years, 50,000 miles, and slightly decreased the price. The suspension was retuned, and one of its most expensive options was a Motorola cellular phone that partially integrated with the car's electronics, costing $2,850, or over $7,300 in 2022 dollars. In 1988, the car received a facelift, making the car 3 inches longer, Cadillac's new 4.5 liter V8 producing 155 horsepower, anti-lock braking was available, interior improved, and while pricing increased slightly to a base of 24891 sales nearly doubled to over 33000 The next few years included multiple trim and equipment updates, such as a CD player, which were added, prices were increased, Driver's side airbag added, and in 1991, Cadillac's new 4.9 liter V8 with their 4-speed transmission, which also helped improve NVH. The 12th generation was the final generation and introduced in 1992. Still considered an E-body, it was now 11 inches longer and 3 inches wider than the 11th generation, and returned to a frameless window glass. Offered in two levels as either the Eldorado Sport Coupe, the ESC, or the ETC nomenclature from before. Launched initially with the previous 4.9 liter V8, it was quickly available with the new North Star system, offering 270 horsepower and 295 horsepower options. Yearly changes involved trim and equipment levels, including in 95 with a revised front and rear grille. In 2000, the Buick Riviera and Olds Toronado were cancelled, leaving the Eldorado as the last vehicle on the e-body platform. In 2001, Eldorado's 50th model year, GM announced the next year would be its last. A limited production run of 1,596 cars, representing three separate batches of 532 cars, the first generation's total production, available in either red or white, representing the original colors of that 53 convertible, and an exhaust system specially tuned to mimic the sound of those original Eldorados, and plaques on the dash signifying its number in production. Production of the Eldorado ended in April of 2002. To help keep this vehicle short, I have glossed over some of the pieces of Eldorado's history, such as the use of Fleetwood bodies and nomenclature, the Brits, and a little bit over the Bromes and how they impacted really automotive them as a whole. Each of these had their own unique features that quite honestly could take their own video to try to go through and explain. When originally designing the car, they ended up choosing the name El Dorado because it means, quote, the golden one in Spanish, but also references that mythical lost city of gold that the Spanish had been searching for. While many U.S. brands had their reputation damaged from poorly conceived or poorly constructed vehicles, one thing that I think hurt manufacturers was moving away from some of the great names of the past. The El Dorado or the related Seville are strong names replaced with meaningless alphanumeric ones. In spite of the 76 being the last American convertible, GM returned with an Eldorado convertible in 1984 and then ended up fighting a class action lawsuit against people who'd bought them as investments before, saying that GM had harmed them and their investments' ability to increase in value. GM ended up winning that one. The Eldorado was technically replaced by the CTS Coupe, 
And I, for one, believe that the time is ripe for a revival of these old American strong names for cars. It wouldn't hurt me at all to see the Eldorado come back at the top of Cadillac's lineup. Thanks for being here and appreciate if you show the channel some love and many thanks to our Patreon supporters for helping support news pinions and histories like this. And be sure to check out this next video right here about the Eldorado's biggest competitor, the Lincoln Continental Mark series. Right here. Trust me, you're going to like it.